Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over defining and using dynamic variables in a shell script. So I've set up this little demo script here that we're gonna go out throughout this video. But let's go ahead and run this script real quick just to see its output, and then we'll go over the script itself. So if you run this little script with uh, some type of environment as the first argument, it will output both the dynamic variable name, which would be you know test API key or prod, as well as the values. You can see the values are different for each one. So that's how the script works at a very basic level of using it. Yeah, let's go over to see how all this works. And by the way, I do wanna mention that you know the code that we're gonna go over here will work with bash 3.2 and above. So if you are using Mac OS out of the box, it should work as well as older systems, but it will work with bash 4 or 5 as well, which is quite nice for some compatibility. So yeah, let's get cracking here. And you know, imagine if you had uh, quite a few different environment variables for a number of different environments, such as test staging and prod, you know, typically these environment variables here, they're going to probably exist in an env file, and then you can source them in, in your script using dot uh, env here, or you can use source as well. You know, I left them here in this file, so it's a little bit easier to read and see everything without needing to jump between a couple of different files here. You know, but now imagine that you have your shell script where, you know, the first argument is the environment you want to work with, such as running demo test or demo prod or whatever it happens to be here. And uh, yeah, I like assigning that to a variable name that's human friendly, right? We don't just want to have dollar sign one floating around our application or script in a hundred different spots here. Now it's kind of funny we're dealing with environment variables and the environment variables name is actually env, but yeah, that makes sense. It's like the environment we're operating in, test, staging, prod, etc. But now let's say that uh, you want to use the value for a specific environment's API key, right? This could be, you know, some reference down later in your script when you actually want to use this API key. You know, at this point, it doesn't really matter which environment it came in from, right? It doesn't matter if it's from prod or test. We only care that uh, we have this one environment variable called API key. So we're kind of dynamically creating the variable name itself here, where this is you know, gonna be interpolated back to test or staging or prod, and that's gonna be our variable name. But then we need to reference the value of that dynamic variable name here. And the value in this case would be ABC123 or DEF456, whatever. So that's actually the magic here, uh, the right-hand side of the equal sign, where we are using a bang to reference the uh, value of the actual variable that we have here, which is API key. And this is called indirect expansion. It's in the man pages for bash. It's a little bit low level, at least, uh, you know, the takeaway for me is that if I want to do dynamic variables and I want to get the value, then I just put a bang. If I want to get the actual dynamic variable name itself, or in this case, you know, just the name of the API key variable, which is dynamic. So technically it is that I guess, then yeah, you can just reference it like normal here. And again, if we go back to here and we just run this uh, demo script again with prod or whatever, you know, we see the prod API key here is uh, the result of evaluating this down to prod API key, and then the value is what we see over here, which is pretty nice. Now, you might be thinking like, well, you can solve this problem without using dynamic variables. So for example, here's some code that I threw together before. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna copy paste it over, and then we'll paste it in, take a look. So yeah, you can just use if conditions, right? You can be like, well, you know, if the environment is test, then yeah, let's just have API key and then test API key. If it's staging, we do the same thing for its staging. And then prod, yep, again, we can just do prod over here. And uh, you know, in this case, we wouldn't be using uh, indirect expansion here, so let me comment that one out here. But in this case, you know, we can just echo out this, and this should produce the same results that we saw before here. So if we do, well, in this case, it's only gonna get the value, right? But yeah, we can see we can do staging as well, and then we can see test as well, um, you know, all different values that we get there. And this totally works fine, but you know, you can even make the case that maybe this is a little bit more straightforward because really it's just like a, an if else, right? But this is a little bit more unmaintainable in my opinion, once you move beyond something like one environment variable. So you can imagine having a script where you might have 15 or 20 environment variables, you know, instead of API key, you can have like, you know, 15 other things that aren't API key here. That means though, for every environment that you have, you might have three of them, you know, test staging prod, you might have two of them. Maybe you just have like a dev and prod or whatever happens to be. You'd have to duplicate this type of thing for every single environment that you have, you know, 15 times for 15 different environment variables. And, you know, it's a little bit harder to read where I actually think that using uh, dynamic variables in this case makes the code a little bit more maintainable, way less things that you need to change when you want to add a new environment variable, because now you just need to add the one here and then, uh, you know, go back to referencing it with the bang here and then you're good to go. So yeah, that is a quick drive-by on using dynamic variables in Bash. That also works with Bash 3.2 and above. You know, let us know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.